is a show that focuses on the person behind the brony. I'm your host, Osaka Jack. Please sit back and relax as we talk to this week's guest brony. Hello everyone, this is Osaka Jack with Into the Spotlight on Everfree Network. With me today, I have someone who you should be following, but are probably not yet. Shame on you. <laughs> Emily Rose, hello. Hello. How are you today? I am doing very well. I'm wearing my kimono, actually, because, oh. you know, Osaka Jack, really, can't get any better than that. I have to ask, is it a kimono or a yukata? Uh, I got it. Yukatas, are, yukatas are comfortable and easy to put on, so if you didn't have five people helping you, then it's probably a yukata? I, I don't have it on properly, which is the first thing. Okay. It's, I'm pretty sure this is a kimono, but okay. to be fair, I got it from Disney World. Could be so, a kimono. Dim uh, Disney has a lot of ties with Tokyo Disneyland. Yes, yes, very true. <laughs> Are you using it for a formal occasion or just like a... a I'm just kind of lounging in it right now because I I can't remember how to put it on properly. <laughs> ah. and, and I don't have the, the shift that goes under it. So I, I know that I can't put it on properly t to wear at events. <laughs> ah, Okay. It, it it was the expensive graduation present that I didn't really think out in its entirety. <laughs> I see. Okay. Yeah, everybody gets one of those, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember what mine was. I think it was a pogo stick. <laughs> I was intelligent. <laughs> I, yeah. Oh, man. I used it once. I'm getting a mental image of your pony self bouncing on a pogo stick now. <laughs> it's like, and, and Pinkie Pie is over in the corner screaming, Hey, you're not doing it right! <laughs> Considering how often I fell down, I would agree with Pinkie. Yes, I'm not doing mm -hmm. it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anybody <laughs> is not familiar with you, can you do just a little blurb? Who are you? What you do? Oh, I'm a college student. That's about as much as it gets. <laughs> I'm an English and Classics double major at a university somewhere in the mysterious American South. And I profess to be elegant, but really have no proof to show that I am. <laughs> You're wearing a kimono. Come on now. <laughs> I'm wearing a kimono over a tank top and jeans. Let's be honest here. <laughs> we'll call it American elegance. <laughs> oh goodness <laughs> to be totally honest when you say mysterious south I imagine like Utah or the flatlands or oh, the Mojave no. desert type thing <laughs> no 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 that in my mind is like the uh, west not okay. quite the wild west but no when I say south I mean bobble belt okay and like... -bam 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 -bam. paddle faster you will hear banjos gotcha Okay. <laughs> we won't get more specific, but I understand what you mean. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why did you um, happen to choose those majors that you did? Well, um, classics, I think, is the closest. that I'll start with classics, because that's the one that I signed up a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago now. Okay. Um, and that's the closest that I can get to exploring my love for mythology and uh, occultish things in general mm -hmm. and history without it really being history and english is because i like to write a lot i don't do much of it but in theory i like to write okay okay wait wait your college student doesn't do much writing come on now. well writing fiction to okay. be precise I, writing fiction i understand i write a bunch of papers i write more papers than i uh. to be honest when i was in college if the paper started with i read this story then it was fiction already <laughs> no i'm oh goodness i'm taking writing intensive classes like i have a history paper that I have due on Tuesday that I have yet to start on because I am the queen of procrastination. Thank you, Twitter. Procrastinate uh, later. Yeah, something like that. 
but uh, papers, 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 papers. Too many papers. Yeah, I remember them. And when I taught for a bit, I would assign them. <laughs> oh, yes. Ugh. But then you have to read through all of them. Yes. My favorite was the... I, I personally enjoyed it when the students would blatantly copy-paste from the internet. Oh, oh my goodness. We had that happen once. Oh. <laughs> my the, the history class that I'm writing this paper for... It was like the first paper that we turned in, and the day, the next day that we went to class, he had the offending plagiarized, completely plagiarized, like they only changed a couple words off the site they found it from. He railed at the entire class for like half an hour <laughs> about plagiarizing papers, and it's just like, gotcha. I do not want to be that person. No, sir. I, I discussed this uh, with uh, my colleagues. We did a more creative approach to it. I gave him an F. I gave mm. him like a 30% on the paper. Mm. And the choices were either A, he comes and tries to defend it and is unable to, or B, mm. sits back with his 30% and, try, and gets angry at me for failing mm. a paper that's obviously good on the internet. <laughs> so, nope. Not surprisingly, he took the 30% and shut up about it, but yeah. didn't plagiarize the next time. <laughs> <laughs> Best way to discourage plagiar plagiarism, though, would be that. I would say, I mean, I understand railing on somebody for doing it, sure. I mean, but at the same time, eh, it doesn't always get caught. Well, no, I mean, like, I just, I don't understand why you would plagiarize and you would because this, these are the professors that have looked through what you can take off the internet yeah. and quote unquote make it your own. Yeah, they can they can spot it on the first go. That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. And as a, I am the twilight sparkle <laughs> uh, of all of my friends. I will do things the hard way when it comes to studying mm -hmm. and writing papers. Sure. Uh, I don't understand why you would deny yourself the opportunity to, you know, learn something. I would tend to agree, but at the same time, I admit there were definitely times where I was lazy and kind of just paraphrased. Yeah. Okay, no, I'll, I'll fully admit this to you, and <laughs> everybody else, shh, just keep it quiet, okay? I'll admit it to you, but don't, don't pass it around or whatever. Let's just see what... When there would be times where I would be writing a psych paper... And I had a very solid argument, and I was fine, but I didn't have enough sources to appease some of my professors. Ah. Uh. So what I would do is I would take one of my sources and find out what sources they used and put those <laughs> as my sources as well. Because technically it wasn't inaccurate. I was using secondhand information from them. Oh, man. The, the closest I think I'll ever come to that is checking the Wikipedia page first, scrolling down to the end and seeing what references they use, and that's the jumping point. That's not bad. I'm fine with that. I think that, yeah, I, I would not consider that cheating. As, a, as an instructor, I consider that, yeah, fine, go with it, sure. Yeah. Check those resources out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I think, I'm not sure if it's standardized yet, but I did see recently... It was like, it was, uh, some groups were attempting to come up with an official way to notarize something for a paper off of the internet, like a tweet. Mm. Ooh, like a way to cite that in the paper? Yes, a specific way to cite a tweet or an email or a text message or something. Oh, man. <clears throat> know, Emily it, cite a YouTube video. <laughs> it sounds hilarious, but at the same time... You know, that is information, and it might That be is. Useful. Yeah, it really, yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, the most, that, the most that, you know, you get is you'll get magazine articles on the Internet, and it's only on the Internet because you can't really do it in print, yep. is that they'll screen cap the tweet and, like, just make strings of tweets. And it's like, you know, reading pop Lip mag pop lip magazines, you know, and it's like they do this all the time, talking about Twitter wars between Rosie O'Donnell and whoever. I, I don't even care anymore. 
I am so past the point of caring about who's fighting with who. Yeah, yeah. It is occasionally funny, but... Occasionally, and then and then sometimes I'll just get mad because, like, the stuff with... It, it's feminism stuff, and I won't trouble you with that unless you specifically want me to trouble you with that. <laughs> I realized last night how much of a firebrand I am. <laughs> yes, I do remember and, that tweet. Oh, God. Were those his specific words? I mean, before we talk about it, were those his specific words? I can call up the specific words. Okay. I, I feel like I shouldn't. I don't know if he's actually going to listen to this okay. or not, but he... Ugh. If anybody's but, curious, you can message... Well, not message me, because it's really hurt, but yeah, message her, and she can give you the exact words. And Yeah, but it's like... <laughs> part of it is, you know, Bible Belt sort of area where we live. It's that morality, that really old Victorian morality that's not going away... Yeah. And it just frustrates me to no end. Sure. Uh, and it's like, I don't really, i rather think of myself as moderate. And then he opens his mouth every other week. <laughs> and I discover just how liberal a firebrand I can get. For some reason, there does seem, I mean, it's, it's not you. I, I think it's everybody. There seems to be, every person has one person or one group that just pushes their buttons and... Usually they're calm and rational, and that person says something and just... Bah, 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 argue, argue, argue! Yes! Oh, I, I can't remember the precise quote or who it's from, but it's um, something about how the gentlest are the ones you should never make angry. Um, related to it, I heard one, uh, Demons Run When a Good Man Goes to War. That's the one! Okay. That's the one. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like, and, it's true. Yep. It's true. Everybody's got a breaking point, and some people you don't want to break. Like Fluttershy. A very wonderful point. Yes, absolutely. You're the going stick. to love me. Oh, gosh. You're going to love me! I can't do that. I, I try. I can't, get, I can't do an angry Fluttershy. I do the meek and mild Fluttershy. I, I've mentioned it before, but uh, Billy West, who does a lot of animation voices, but oh, pretty yes. much half the cast of Futurama. Yes. Uh, one of his interviews, he was saying, uh, somebody asked him if it was difficult to sing as the character, and he said, no, singing as a character is easy. Um, the most difficult things to stay in character are if you are the extreme ranges of emotion. If you yes. have to be quiet and whispery, or if you have to be loud and exclaiming. Those are the times that a, pers a voice actor is most likely to break character, is what he said. Oh, yes. Oh, that makes my sense. Goodness. Like, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. That's the hardest thing, is trying to do anything, at least when I'm trying to imitate ponies, mm -hmm. is the hardest thing is trying to get them out of what they normally do. Yeah. So angry Pinkie Pie is hard to do. Furious sure. Fluttershy is almost impossible. Right. But I can do, I can do Discorded Fluttershy surprisingly well. That one works. I think Andrea did such a great job that uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's easy to get that one. I would guess a, um, I would guess a sultry Applejack would also be hard. <laughs> like a sul like sophisticated sultry uh, cigarette in one of those long cigarette holders. Yes. Mm. I I don't know how you could pull that with a Texas accent. Exactly. <laughs> Cherry, I think I think. Oh goodness! Um, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember the pony, but she had the southern accent from New Orleans, and that is Actually, the sort. Actually, I think of... you, you might be referencing the Friendship is Witchcraft episode. Kinda, sorta, not oh. really. Okay. <laughs> but it's that sort of New Orleans accent that can that is elegance, yeah, uh, probably at its finest. <laughs> uh, Cherry's oh. Jubilee, I think, is the name here. Yes, th to. thank you. Yep. <laughs> But it, uh, apparently southern accents are named the uh, sexiest accent in the U.S. I find it surprising. I don't know if you can see this blank stare that I've got right now. but Yeah, I can imagine. You know, I, I'm not going to disagree with it because I'm sure it is possible to be anything in any accent. I'm just going to say that 
there is a reason that most newscasters are taught my accent. Mm-hmm. Um, there are very there are some natural pronunciation errors. I admit this fully. Um, if you ask me to put something on pancakes, I naturally want to say to put syrup on it. <laughs> but uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I have my own accent problems. Uh, moving to where I've now at a youngish age, and I was still impressionable as far as accents go. And I would say I would every once in a while slip up and say "nan," and <laughs> my parents would never let me live it down. They really would not. <laughs> To be fair, uh, my mother, who is British but has lived in America for a really long time now, um, she came over when she was like eight, I think. No, eleven. She came over when she was like eight or eleven. She will still say banana, and mm-hmm. we always make uh, sheep noises at her, <laughs> which she hates, but she laughs oh. with us too. Oh yeah. So yeah, the teasing will never stop. Nope. I recall specifically when I was in high school, there was a student who moved from the deep south, mm. and she was not very friendly. <laughs> I, I, I'm just mentioning that at the top, but during one discussion, she insisted vehemently that she didn't have an accent. You never I do that. I don't have an accent. Y'all are the ones that have the accents. Oh, oh, seriously? You never, you never ever do that. <laughs> I betray my nationality when I say y'all. It, I, <laughs> you cannot tell me that I do not have an accent somewhere. Oh yeah, everybody does. Somewhere, even with just like the colloquialisms of living in the South, saying y'all or do you want a coke instead of a pop versus up north. Apparently, they say pop up north. I don't understand how. Um, I go with soda. It's a yeah. neutral term. Or if I have to, soda pop, I will agree to. Sure. Mm. Yeah, Coke confused me because somebody asked if I wanted an orange Coke. I'm like, they make that? Yeah. I went to the Coke factory in Georgia once on a on a school trip. And just the flavor combinations, some astounded me. And others made me want to go and hide under a <laughs> couple pots and pans because that should not exist. There, there's a uh, convenience store chain called QT, Quick Trip. Mm. And uh, when I left, I don't know if it still works, but when I left, uh, next to the soda fountains, they actually had flavor shots. Oh, dear. So you could get your own size soda and add whatever flavor shots you wanted. The stipulation mm. was if you add a flavor shot, you are paying for the soda. You are paying for it. You're not going to be able to test it, pour it out, and then test something else. No. Mm. But vanilla Coke, wonderful. Cherry Coke, I liked it a lot. Vanilla Cherry Coke. I do not know why this has not been marketed. It was amazing. <laughs> I insist this. Oh, man. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm rather a plain Jane sort of gal. I, I didn't... It took me forever just to put like ketchup and mustard on a cheeseburger. Like, I still don't do years. that, but I just don't like condiments. So. But I mean, no, I mean, like, all I would get was cheese, meat, bread. Done. Yes, absolutely. I am with you, sister. Hey, man, that is a cheeseburger. <laughs> I, I I do break it up every once in a while. I'm starting to get more adventurous in my old age. And, yeah. you know, the most I'll take off are pickles. I do not care for pickles. Never have. I don't, I don't like pickles. Pickles just, ugh. Yuck. <laughs> I'm wondering how you would react to some of the Japan flavors that have been out. We've uh, had uh, ice cucumber Pepsi. Uh, nope. <laughs> nope. 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 Pepsi nope. Blue Hawaii. Oh dear. Strawberry oh, yogurt dear. Pepsi. That is debatable. No, it I don't was bad. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I I trust your judgment. Shiso Pepsi. That was a good one. Shiso is an herb, kind of like basil. Mm. Mm. So it's kind of like a basil pet. Oh, it was nasty. It was so bad. <laughs> you made it sound good at first. Then you started describing it. And I'm steadily shaking my head. No. Yeah. No, not so good. Nope. 
Oh, man. I think the strangest flavor combination you'll ever get me to have is uh, fries dipped in, like, Frosty. You know, Wendy's. Oh, Wendy's fries. Naturally. Yes, yes. You have yes, to, yeah. yes. It's like, that's probably the strangest combination you will ever get me to try. I'm going to request you try something, and this is coming from an American. <laughs> I am ashamed to admit this, but I have <laughs> learned things about fast food from Australians and Canadians. Oh. I, and, and I am ashamed of this. I'm, I'm totally ashamed. An Australian <laughs> taught me the perfect way to eat hamburgers and french fries. From mm-hmm. the, Open the hamburger, put the french fries on it, close the hamburger, eat it. But yes. see, that makes sense. That's I know. Just... just why did I not think of this before? <laughs> true. Very, very true. And it's wonderful. Um, but from a Canadian, I learned that maple syrup is a really good dipping sauce for nuggets. I what I do is I will dip bacon in maple syrup or honey. This makes sense to me. And it's it's so very good. Even with uh, low sodium or turkey bacon, it still tastes really good, provided you know the honey is you know good honey. Right, of course. No, I I, I fully agree. But yeah, uh, maple syrup is a good dipping sauce for chicken nuggets. It's that makes sense. I know. I highly recommend everybody go try it. <sighs> <laughs> we spent what first fifteen minutes talking about food. <laughs> Why not? You know what? Why not? I'm I mean, hungry. The fact anyway. that I'm hungry is irrelevant because it's breakfast time and I don't have food. To ma- <sighs> Amen, brother. Amen. So your night is finishing, so you can finish this and go have some fast food, no problem. Well, I'm see, still at the a.m. and uh. It's only 6.30 where I am right now, so – and I don't eat dinner until like 8 o'clock because I'm weird. I have dinner at about 11.30 or midnight. The, the way that – Work schedule. Uh, the way that it works here, and it's historically based because the South is, you know, a bunch of farming land. Sure. And so they would have big dinners as soon as the sun went down. And it's like people eat at like 5.30, 6 o'clock, and then they go and do a bunch of stuff. I cannot do that because I have been raised the style that my mom was raised. And they would have dinner at like 8 o'clock at night. I am and... of the opinion that after dinner you don't do things except relax. Exactly. Possibly go for a walk if it's a really nice night. Sure. Read. You know, yeah. nothing nothing energy spending. Exactly. Yeah. I, I fully agree. You eat dinner and then you cool down before you go to bed. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, so you're telling me that there's an entire section of the states that I was unaware of that eats dinner and then does things? I would imagine that they do things. I don't know what they do, right. but I imagine that they do things. I... <laughs> I don't, I don't know how they function. I really don't. Yeah, this is very odd. I, I'm, I'm having trouble wrapping my mind around this. I, I do too sometimes. Huh. Interesting. I, mm. No, I can't do it. Sorry. You eat dinner <laughs> and you go to bed. That's how it works. Exactly. And if you get hungry and you wake up in the middle of the night, you go and get a late night snack and then you go back to bed. I can't do that anymore. I've reached the age where that's just wreaking havoc with my stomach. And I, if I do that, I will be awake most of the night with, oh, okay, where's the Tums? Mm, I mean, uh, when I go for late night snacks, I do popcorn. Oh, that's a good idea. So. Actually, that would be the biggest problem for me just because um, with Japanese apartments, everybody forgives noise because that's usually something you can't help. Paper walls, and- basically? No, no, I've got decent walls. They're not very thick, but they're okay. Um, but yeah, it comes from the idea of, you know, there used to be paper walls, so you would ignore sounds from the other apartments. That's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> but smells. Mm. Smells are not something that's easily forgiven. So oh, if you are no. cooking fish, then you light some incense. Ooh. And what? I... Scented candles have not come to Japan until the last five years. I, I, I promise you, there's there's no scented uh, candles here. And if I cook popcorn, I, it better be during dinner time when I do that, because otherwise I'll get looks the next day. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I know I cooked popcorn at 11 o'clock, but it was... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, goodness. 
I, I don't know. The popcorn seems to keep itself to where the microwave is, like just the inside of the microwave. Right. The, the As bad as it gets is when, you know, my roommate will reheat her shrimp stir fried rice. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh. All right. I, I, yeah. There, there is a trick for getting rid of the smell, though. And, like, I'll have an apple or two on hand, and you just cut the apple in half and stick it in whatever place the offending smell is issuing from yeah. it will absorb the smell so i have apples on hand yeah uh tomatoes tomato juice works really well for that as well well you know i at least get to say buy some apples <laughs> wow you blindsided me there i didn't even see that coming and you did a beautiful job <laughs> thank you <laughs> wow you're much obliged ah you got me I usually can see those things coming a mile away, and you just... Nope. <laughs> I, I admit it, she references. blindsided me, and I haven't been blindsided in a few months. That, wow, good job. Good job. Thank you. I feel uh, special now. All right. I'm going to have to get back into the sink of things. I'm going to have to start predicting things. Okay. Uh, your favorite <laughs> number is 27. Nope. Damn. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, it is a... 27 <laughs> is multiple of my favorite number. Okay, one of my favorite then. numbers. No, not nine. Three. The other one. Yes. Okay. All right. See, that's why I did 27, because it's three cubed. Three to the third. True. And you you know what? Now that I mention this, you're going to see it. 27 comes up a lot in the natural world, and it's really odd. Wait, wasn't that a Jim Carrey movie? Was it? I think. It might have been. Because I seen it, was, it. it was like the one time where he's not acting like an idiot all the time. And he's almost, he's bordering on psychopathic killer, and it's huh. like he's obsessed with this number. And I want to say it's twenty seven. Huh? You know, I had not heard that or seen that movie, so I've, I've, this has been my lucky number for a very long time. But mm. I'm going to have to research this and see if I've been coming off as a psychopath to everybody. Great, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I know that you mentioned it recently on Twitter, but you've got yourself a brand spanking new microphone. Yes, I do. I'm using it right now. Mm -hmm. It's a pink Sasquatch. It's... nope. (laughs) It's a Blue Yeti. (laughs) The other kind of aisle. Right, right. (laughs) I think pink Sasquatch would be a funny knockoff to just put out. I'm sorry. That that would be... oh my goodness. I I can't imagine what the color scheme for that thing would be like. I really can't. (laughs) Is a Blue Yeti actually blue? No, it's not. I mean, but... Is it Blue Steel? (laughs) <laughs> okay. I'm thinking of Zoolander. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! And I oh gosh! No, the one that I have is kind of not quite stainless steel look to it. Um, chrome-ish accents. I see. But they sell it in like silver, white, and black stuff like that. The usual colors for technology things. Sai, oh, Oham, na- Mori. Naturally. I would love to see, like, an ice blue colored one of these things. That would be great. Yeah. Or just one decked out with, like, a neon trim. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that that would be a really cool looking microphone. Yeah, it would. I, oh, gosh. One of the first cell phones that I had in Japan, it was... Um, I found it incredibly cool, but the uh, mouthpiece, whenever you spoke, it had different colored lights that would intermittently turn on and off and flash as you were talking. So it was like a rainbow near your mouth. It was so cool. Oh, I can imagine. I mean, it was pointless. It was pointless. That's about as pointless as the the light up sketchers that everybody wanted when they were seven. Let's be honest. There was no use for that. But the lights make you run faster. Yeah. I have to say, though, uh, those things, they cause a lot of trouble in the airports when there was that whole shoe bomb scare. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think of it. Went in with my shoes, and my shoes have electronic devices in them, and holy (laughs) cow, did did. Mm. I'm just glad I got there like three hours early because it took about that long to get my stuff through. Oh, oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeesh. I went flying once in my life, ever. It it was pre-9-11, and 
the most I remember about it was that I had a Wendy doll, you know, like a Barbie doll, except not really. I lost one of her shoes on the plane, oh. and that's all I remember about that plane ride. <laughs> I've flown enough where uh, I'm, I don't mind at this point, but I don't like it. Yeah, well, I mean, you you live in Japan, and I would imagine flying from Japan to the U.S. every once in a while. Well, it's the only way to get to Japan, to get to the U.S., yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Let's try to go by water again, not run you know, into an actually, iceberg. My uh, One of my friends, he missed his chance, and I almost smacked him for it, but um, he, run, he, he runs an import company, and uh, they do some airmail, but a lot of their stuff arrives by cargo, by ship. And it takes a full month to come over. And mm-hmm. at one point, he was able to rent a container. Uh, so a container space on the ship. And he could have literally gone from California to Japan over a month's period. Like mm. food and water, everything included in it. He had the mm-hmm. chance to, and he didn't take it. I'm like, what? it would have been so cool. So cool. Oh, man. I mean, yeah, it would have been boring for a lot of it. Granted, but yeah. how many people can say they've gone intercontinent, you know, they've crossed the Pacific by boat? How many people can say that? Exactly. Or ship or oh, yacht or, yeah. I don't know the terminology. I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I almost smacked him for it. I was like, Man, if mm-hmm. I could take time off from work and had money and, uh, mm-hmm. but I'm guessing you purchased the Blue Yeti with something in mind or some ideas. Yes, yeah, so, some ideas. <laughs> um, I don't know if you saw that thing I put on Twitter slash Tumblr, but just <clears throat> recorded Sherlock's uh, Hounds of Baskerville rant. I my, did, yeah. My inaugural posting. <laughs> ah, you're going to hate me, and you might end the interview at this point when I say that <clears throat> I have not seen Sherlock yet. Oh, but it's so good. I know. Oh. I know, it's, I've... I've got a list of have, really have you awesome seen, things. I, I do too. Um, have you seen the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock movies? I have not. Well, there's there's a difference between Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock mm-hmm. and Benedict Cumberbatch's Sherlock. RDJ does this, it's more punchy, action-y, it's very American. Right. But Benedict is very cerebral. Because he goes on these like minute long, just list everything about a person. Um, like when he first meets Watson, he he does this rapid fire uh, thing. It's like I know you're an army doctor invalided home from Afghanistan. I know how you. Bleh. I know you have a brother who's worried about you, but you won't go to him for help, possibly because possibly because uh, he's an alcoholic, probably because he walked out on his wife. And I know that your therapist thinks you're lymphopsychosomatic. Quite correctly, I'm afraid. And it's just, like, all this stuff that he gets from seeing Watson walk into the room and from Watson handing him his cell phone. And he goes and he explains it in detail later. And it's just, like, these these deductions give me chills. And I just, <laughs> it makes me naturally unholy sort of happy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, to to be fair, I am an Anglophile in the extreme, oh. and naturally, Benedict Cumberbatch is on the top of the list. Sure. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of stuff is, of his has come to Japan, so just the stuff that I can get oh. online, semi-legally, is how mm, I can watch yeah. I say semi because... Torrent. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Enough of that. Uh, <laughs> but I, you did mention it, that you're uh, starting some, uh, attempting to do some VA work. Yes, I would love to do some VA work. Mm-hmm. Um, there was an open, there have been a lot of audition calls on EQD the few times that I check. And I auditioned for, uh, there was a thing about a past sense audiobook. And it's like, yay, <laughs> I can perhaps get a part. <laughs> And perhaps I did. Oh, perhaps okay. I shelled out all this money on a new microphone just so I could, you know, <laughs> snag a part. I tried. Uh-huh. <laughs> and 
you, you know, have a nice, having a nice microphone would be much better than using the uh, dinky ones that I have to borrow from my friends. So yeah, I have my own. Be difficult. It, it's better if you can hear what somebody's saying and it doesn't mm-hmm. sound like it's coming through a 50 year old computer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. That would be a funny Fluttershy, though. Yay. <laughs> You're going to love me. <laughs> oh my god, now I'm laughing too hard. Oh I can't do that voice very much. I've got to recover. Sorry. <laughs> no, Pinkie Pie. Oh, Pinkie Pie's voice is going to be the death of me. I okay, I, I'm not sure it's going to be the voice so much as the speed. Oh, no, for me, it's... You have to pretend like you've been sucking on a helium balloon for an hour okay and it gives me a headache when i do it in long periods of time and it, simultaneously because i have to reach for the pitch you see probably i don't know how my voice comes across right now it probably comes across as more delicate and ladylike because microphones are weird but uh-huh. when i hear myself i hear myself not in a very high pitched voice and pinkie pie is basically like this all the time and it not only gets on your head it gets on your voice because i'm reaching right gotcha i understand <laughs> I would imagine that gets difficult. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Luna is more in my range, apparently. So. Right. Natural range, mind you. <laughs> so we're hoping for a lot of Luna, not so much Pinkie Pie, maybe not I, so much original Derpy. I haven't tried original Derpy. Oh. I I don't know, but I can't quite. I just don't know what goes wrong. What went wrong? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you mo- you modify things. You get used to modifying things. Right, I see. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks. It is sorority row, and their carousing is giving me a headache. <laughs> that was good, yes. Yes. <laughs> well, that's, I suppose that's a good lead-in. Uh, one of the questions I ask in all of my interviews... Um, in all of My Little Pony, what would you say is the one line or one scene that defines you as a brony? Ooh, defines me as a brony. Oh, that is a very hard question. Yes, it is. I'm rather proud of it. I, oh, goodness. I think the, at least applied to my current state, would be Luna. Face your fears, Scootaloo. Oh, Face good. your fears. Because, you know, as a brony you kind of have this fear of being found out that you like the show even if you're a girl like my dad still gives me grief about it my both my parents know that i watch the show and my dad will just give me looks when i start talking about it like you really watch that you're in college (laughs) and and it just you know naturally frustrates me a little bit and so try to face my fear of being found out and by kind of making a jump, um, you know, learning to love what you're a fan of. Yeah. If it makes any sense. Well, not so much love it, but admit to yourself that you love it. Yeah. I can see that, absolutely. Sure. And and then there's always fun, 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 fun. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> I did, did you go to BronyCon? No, you I did um not, no. Oh goodness. There uh, I went uh the 2013 BronyCon. And you know, going up and down the halls were crowds of people squealing fun 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 at the top of their lungs and it was just great. <laughs> <laughs> great i loved it and everybody else that i was with got sick of it after the first day and it's just like i don't understand what you're talking about it's fun <laughs> literally okay yes 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 as of recording this interview season four has not premiered yet it has no. a week one week mm-hmm. uh, actually eight days eight days from right now so the question is, in eight days is also the Doctor Who premiere. Which one uh, are you going to watch first? Don't ask me that question. Uh. 
it's it's going to be a very difficult decision. I have the distinct feeling that I'm going to be going with ponies okay. because I know people who are doing like season four release parties, and okay. those are the ones that I'm getting invited to. So those are probably the ones that I'm going to. Yeah, unfortunately, I got invited to one as well, but it's in Tokyo, and I'm like, ah. Uh, if I go to that, I would have to take the night bus to get over there. I would have to mm. watch it, and I would have to take the night bus back here, shower, and then go to work. Like, ah, mm. I can't do that. No, no, that hurts. My, uh, I, I'm going to have to, like, drive a couple hours to, you know, the place where it's actually happening, because it's happening at a neighboring college. And when I say neighboring, I mean that term very loosely. Mm-hmm. Um so drive like two, three hours to get to the place where it actually happens. Right. And then after that, I get to drive a cumulative, oh, goodness, five hours back to my house okay. or my parents, my parents' house, really, because college students, we are poor. <laughs> yes, indeed. I, I recommend it. I did it when I went to uh, university. My university was literally half hour away from my parents' house. Mm-hmm. which was close enough to go home every weekend to do laundry. Yeah. And, oh, man, did that save me money. <laughs> oh, yeah. I go home once a, one, once a month and do laundry at my parents' house, and it's like, it's like, uh, yeah. I, I, do miss, I do miss my house a little bit every once in a while, especially after I've had a bunch of papers, and it's just like I do not want to have to do all the work. Right. I'm going to laze around and be like my cat. Yes, a very... Um, uh, Definitely something to aspire to. Oh, yes. It would be nice to be as relaxed as cat can be. Everybody wants to be a cat. You have no idea how popular that movie is over here. Oh, uh, really? No, but Marie... <laughs> the character Marie from uh, Aristocrat, Aristocrats. Oh, oh she's, she's the most popular uh, Tokyo Disneyland character there is. Oh, wow. Nobody I'm knows so- the movie. But they Nobody... love that it's a white cat made by Disney, so she's really <laughs> popular. <laughs> aren't aren't white cats lucky in Japan? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Then that's what it is. That's part of what it is. But usually, a white cat that's lucky uh, signifies money, and mm-hmm. Marie's never been shown to be a money cat. She's just something cute that the, they really she like. She comes. If you want to get technical, she comes from money because she's. You would have to watch the movie to know this. True. Very true. <laughs> I know this, and I, I understand and recognize that fact, but yeah, most people, no clue. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very, not a Very t- true. They love this character, but they have no idea who it is. It's not one of... The popular Disney movies are the ones from Disney's Golden Age, because princesses, not anthropomorphic cats. Yeah, I could see that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, princesses are popular. Mm-hmm. They are. Naturally. Yeah, no, almost nobody over here knows the in Robin Hood movie from Disney. What? No. Yeah, it not, it's unknown. Oh, for shame, Japan. I know. That movie has got to be the best thing. It's seconded, I think, only by men in tights as far as Robin Hood things go. <laughs> we're manly men, we're men in tights. The night is young and you're so beautiful. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. yes. Call the locksmith. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, naturally, Patrick Stewart, I'm the king. I get to kiss her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A good line. Delivered very well. Oh, yes. Well, you've mentioned that you're uh, starting out or you're trying to start off as a fan VA. Yes. What's, and we mentioned Pinkie Pie is a headache, but um, do you have any original takes on any background characters that oh, have I'm... yet been unvoiced? Hmm. Well, um... Like, I'm curious to hear Featherweight's voice. Featherweight? Featherweight, hmm. the staff photographer for the full free movies. Yeah. Th- that's difficult because I don't think I can do prepubescent boys very well. Okay. Um, That's a quote we want to take out of context, don't we? Probably. (laughs) The closest I will get to that is Rainbow Dash and try and make your voice crack a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I can't do it very well. Um, (laughs) It's like I can do it. Scootaloo is just like a higher voice version of Rainbow Dash, I guess. 
Very I true. Know. Just be careful if you're doing Scootaloo. I, yeah. I, I think I might have been the first person to notice this. Everybody else puts the accent on dash. Rainbow dash. Rainbow dash. Rainbow dash. Scootaloo accents the rain. Rainbow dash. True. You're right. She does. I don't know. I think out of the cu- the Cutie Mark Crusaders, I think the best one I could do is probably Apple Bloom. I would agree just because when you said I think, you translate to I think. Yeah. You already went into her voice before you've realized it. <laughs> it happens. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Apple Bloom is probably easier than Applejack because my voice gravitates towards higher for some reason and not sure. lower <laughs> when it comes to when it comes to Texas accents. I mean, this is my take on Applejack, but it's not bad. Nope. All right. Hey, so nope. let's try for yeah. I was just gonna say let's try for a Big Mac. <laughs> nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> Oh, it's so hard to do deep voices, you know. If you had talked to me about three hours ago when I had just woken up, I think I could have done a very decent Big Mac. I don't know. You're doing a pretty decent one right now. Well, it's not wonderful, but the first few hours I'm awake, I have a very deep... Actually, when I'm just awake or when I'm exhausted and tired, it's like my vocal cords relax and I get an extra deep octave down there. Mm. Oh, man. And I think one of the saddest things about ponies in Japan is that so far, Big Mac has not said the same word. Ugh. He changes by situation. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. No. Oh, man. I can't imagine. <laughs> Ugh. Could be worse, but still, yeah. yeah. Could, could be worse. It could, it could be worse. Well, I fully admit, I will fully admit this. While I love love the job that they did. Oh, I love the voice actors' work on Prince Blue Blood. Japanese Mm -hmm. Prince Blue Blood is amazing. (laughs) Blows the English one out of the water. Mm. He is such the suave, smooth, awesome style. Oh, it's amazing. If you get a chance, guys, go listen to Japanese Blue Blood. Well, are there any other projects that you'd like to plug while you're here? Oh... I, I say starting voice actress as in I have not gotten any real work. Uh, but at the same the, time, you're re- pretty much slammed with university stuff right now. So very true, and you know, taking nineteen hours worth of classes oh is. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they're all regular on hours. I mean, it could be like last semester I did eighteen hours. They were all honors courses. <laughs> I still passed. Very yeah. good. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm in the honors college at my university, so we have to take, you know, a set number of honors hours. And it's like, I just tried to blow all of mine out of the water that first semester. <laughs> uh, totally glad that I have to do that because, you know, with double majors, I'm going to have that to worry about. And yeah. honors classes, there are only so many. True. Very true. Had to rearrange my schedule and um, pick up an honors physics for next semester. So that's going to be, you know, loads of fun. Yeah. I do, I do like science. It's just I'm apprehensive. Right. I understand. I am similar with calculus. Duh. I do not care. Nope. I, I like math. I love science. I took a total of seven semesters of statistics. Not calculus. I will not. Calculus you. hurts me. Yeah. Just, mm. I... I uh... My experience from calculus is from high school. I took Likewise. Ad- advanced placement, honors, whatever you want to call it. I took the high-level calculus my senior year of high school. I don't care that I passed it. I don't <laughs> care that I passed it with a good grade. Mm-hmm. I do not want to take it again because I <laughs> felt constantly like I did not understand what was going on. <laughs> yep, likewise. Absolutely. Uh, no, 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 no. Never again. Nope, 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 no, no. <laughs> Trade. Well, That's remember, as far as I'm getting. Well, remember, everybody has fears, Emily Rose. Mm-hmm. Every, <laughs> everyone must face them in their own way, but they must be faced, be faced. or the nightmares, the nightmares will, continue. will continue. You blindsided me there. You got me back. <laughs> <laughs> I had it ready. Ninja kick. I was like, when am I going to use this? When am I going to use this? Okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Ninja quote. <laughs> Well, everyone, today we have been speaking with Emily Rose. Be sure to follow her on Twitter and Tumblr. And I don't know, are you planning on starting a YouTube channel? 
I kind of have a YouTube. I just don't know what I would use it for, really. Well, uh, voice acting. I mean, that's a good place to put your samples. Yeah, I just... Bleh. Speaking of samples, if you want me to run through like the rest of my voice acting repertoire before we quit... <laughs> Sure, have, let's hit it. Let's hit it. I, I have quite a few that aren't all necessarily ponies. Okay. Um, I've, I've got Fluttershy, and Fluttershy is relatively easy to pull off. Um, um, Pinkie Pie? You heard that one. Uh, <laughs> Rarity, which is just a little bit British, if I have my way of saying so. Um... Luna, which mm, I don't think I can pull off Moonbutt right now. Oh, <laughs> would you believe that that's the tweet that got full papers to follow me? Moonbutt. Moonbutt, because I was recording. I was recording for a project, uh, just auditions, uh -huh. and I had to keep going back and back because I wasn't getting it right, and it was constantly on Luna, and it's like having to listen to your voice over and over again and then having to record the same lines over and over again i eventually went moon butt moon butt do buddy do and put it on twitter <laughs> and that's what i put on twitter and full papers followed me i think immediately after that and it's just like this is what got you to follow me Beautiful. out of all the things that i could possibly post my 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 bungled shakespeare references and you follow me for moon butt <laughs> Really? <laughs> really? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know. I, I really don't know. He is a very silly pony. Indeed he is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. Where, 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 where was I? Um, vo vo voice imitations. We did Fluttershot uh, by Moon Butt. Uh... Moon butt, moon butt, do buddy do. What the? Heck? I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I think I'm losing my mind again. I've um, got another nightmare for you. Moon. <laughs> um, I. Nightmare moon. Oh, that that's interesting. And I did audition for that at one point. And oh, my beloved subject. It's been so long since I've seen your precious little sun-loving faces. Uh, it's not. It's not very good. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I can do. Do you? This is going to be completely out of the water. But do you watch Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridged, perchance? I do not. I'm sorry, but I'm sure I have fan. I have people. <laughs> For anybody who watches Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge. I can do Tristan. It's not very hard. It involves sticking things up my nose. <laughs> he, he, t <laughs> he talks like Bullwinkle for the entire show, and oh, it's wow. beautiful, and I love it. And you and then and then watch me pull a rabbit out of my hair. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, exactly. That's what it is. And then um, and then when he gets to, I don't know if you've watched the original series, but when Merrick shows up. Matic Ishtar, the sexiest man in the room. <laughs> <laughs> that one's the most fun to do. Sure, sounds like it. And um, and then I've, I think I have one more that I will trouble you with. And okay. Lois Griffin from Naturally Family Guy. Peter Griffin, put that thing down before you hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> um, I, so, I do many do many voices, many accents. Not all of them are good. Yeah. <laughs> They're funny, and that's important. <laughs> yeah, and it's odd because I don't consider myself to be a funny person. I like to say that I'm, you know, classy and educated, and then well, moonbug. Why is classy, educated, not funny? I don't know. It's just they don't seem to go together sometimes. I mean, I make an exception for full papers, yes. but not, not, not for myself, not generally. <laughs> My library is stacked with Arthur Conan Doyle and uh, Tolkien and Shakespeare and Paradise Lost for class, but... Um, it's like this is the stuff that goes on my library, and I, I don't consider myself a very funny person, not at all. <laughs> 
I don't know. You did moon butt. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I think that was a moment of temporary insanity. If it comes off as funny, I will be much surprised for that. <laughs> yeah, it works. <laughs> Well, everyone, mm. today we've been speaking with Emily Rose. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you for having me. I'm really pleased. Yeah. Everybody follow her on Twitter and Tumblr and YouTube if she'll give us the information. And try oh, to get her yeah. for VA work. <laughs> everyone, this has been Osaka Jack with Into the Spotlight on Everfree Network. We'll catch you next time. Bye.